We now begin chapter 2. Imagine a situation, close your eyes and think about a doctor from a remote rural village who needs advice, expert medical advice to treat a poor patient who has developed some cardiac complications after the delivery of a third child. What can he do without ICTs? Very little unless he has the experience. But consider that the doctor could not properly diagnose a condition because he did not have proper medical equipment in his village or even in his district or provincial hospital. So, using the high speed communication link on a satellite between the rural facility and a high specialty urban hospital in the capital, the doctor in the rural area was able to talk to the specialist in the urban area who could see through the telecommunication link, diagnose treatment, something that was not possible even a decade ago. Having done this and having experienced the benefit of ICT, this rural doctor then decided that there were possibilities and so he undertook a continuing medical education course through the distance mode and within a few years he was able to bring the expert medical advice that he needed to give to his villagers right to the rural village. All this something which would not have been possible or even heard of around the year 2000 is today possible only if uh, the technology is there and if he has access to a mobile phone an inexpensive mobile phone in his hand is all he needs in order to access the health benefits that he can then in turn give to his uh, patients. What does that mean? This means that ICTs have transformed our lives and we will now talk about information and communication technologies in terms of the acronym ICTs. The definition of ICTs are many and many are often confused between the different definitions. <coughs> but when we look at websites, the most commonly accepted definition of ICTs is that this is an umbrella term that includes any communication device or application encompassing radio, television, cellular phones, computer and network hardware and software, satellite systems and so on as well as the various services and applications that are associated with them such as video conferencing, distance learning. ICTs are often spoke of in a, spoken of in a particular context and within developing countries such as ICTs in education, ICTs in health, ICTs in terms of libraries or ICTs in support of sustainable development. The term is somewhat common in the developing world outside of the United States. Having said this, we accept what is really the United Nations definition of RCTs and we accept a 2003 definition from UNDP which basically says that ICTs are information handling tools, a varied set of goods, applications, services that are used to produce, store, process, distribute and exchange information. They include the old ICTs that is radio and television, telephone and they also include the new ICTs, computers, satellites and wireless technology and the internet. These different tools are now able to work together and are combined to form our network world, a massive infrastructure of interconnected telephone services, standardized computer hardware, the internet, radio and TV and which reaches into every corner of the globe. Traditionally, as even as near as about 15 years ago, it was possible to distinguish the different ICTs in terms of their unique features. For instance, <coughs> when we saw a print book, we referred to it as text. When we saw radio, we referred to it as audio. And when we saw television, we referred to it as audio visual. So we could distinguish by the in terms of the features. But with convergence since the 1990s, these distinctions have become blurred. And what were earlier 
simple, discreet media have combined onto a single platform and become a reality. These ICT devices and applications are used now in a converged platform in the production, storage and sharing of information and knowledge. Understanding ICTs also means understanding their different applications which have changed from the traditional sectors of development that is agriculture, education and health to be used in industrial processes, supply chain management, prediction and control, surveillance and control to cite a few. But to understand ICTs, we have to unpack them into their different elements that is into technologies, applications, services and content. There is a diagram given in your text, a taxonomy of the ICTs which breaks them up for purposes of discussion into the technologies, the applications, the services and the content and also highlights for you the environments in which they should work. Let us now look at each of these individually. <coughs> First of all, the hardware. Let us look at the hardware. The hardware is essentially information capture devices which include devices such as cameras, keyboards, microphones and recorders, scanners, modems, etc. Information storage devices include servers, hard disks and external storage devices that you are familiar with, films, tapes, CDs, DVDs, memory sticks and memory cards. Information sharing devices can be described as radios, television, telephones, fixed and mobile, handheld devices such as the ebook readers, the iPad and other similar devices and computers. The computer, the tablet PC as it is known and the mobile phone with their capture, storage, sharing capabilities all converged on one platform have become very powerful hardware tools. But to run these hardware devices, one needs software. Software can be essentially of two kinds. On the one hand, we have proprietary software, which is computer software licensed under an exclusive legal right of the copyright holder. We also have free and open source or also called FOSS software, which refers to computer software that is available in source code and freely available for users to download and use. Taking into account that software can be either proprietary or FOSS, nonetheless can we distinguish it by its features? Yes, we can. Software can be operating systems or they can be application softwares. For instance, in order to run your computer, it has to have an operating system which is a set of programs that help in controlling and managing the hardware and the software resources of a computer system and other hardware. The application softwares again which we are familiar with are known as apps or application. These are simple computer software programs designed to help the user to perform single or multiple related specific tasks such as creating a document, creating a presentation, creating a small multimedia product, creating a learning object and other kinds of little, uh, little presentations that you and I may make from day to day. But having these applications is not enough. When we write a document, when we prepare a presentation, we are essentially dealing with content which is then loaded onto a software. The content is the substantive matter, the subject matter, the information or creative material contained inside a book. For instance, the text inside a book, the text in and photographs in a newspaper, the song inside a recording or playback device as distinct from the device itself and content generally consists of either text which is written material, audio which are sound bites or pre-recorded materials, video which are visual, moving, television, footage, film again, visual, moving, 
film footage, but on a different through a different chemical process. Graphics, which are graphs, charts, tables, photographs, and animation, which are moving graphic animated objects such as cartoons. All of us are familiar with some of these terms and all of us have used various content for various purposes during our lifetimes. What is important to remember is that content is the most important element of ICTD activities. It may be created globally that is for a world at large, nationally that is for a country, regionally that is for a sub-region in a country or it may be locally produced by a community or an individual. <coughs> it may be pre-recorded and obtained from other sources. It may also be produced by a single agency for mass distribution over a, the internet as a website or produced by many for a small group. So, you can produce your content in the same way that a news agency produces a website for distribution over the internet. The content may be in, in, in an international language such as English or in a national or local language and may be produced individually for wide distribution such as in a blog or a social networking site. So, there are various ways, but nonetheless content remains the most important element in ICTD activities. But what is the content to serve for? What is it for? Content is created to meet a set of services. Content is developed to meet a given set of requirements or services. This could be information, could be education, it could be entertainment or it could be a combination of these information that is both educative, <coughs> entertainment that is both education and combination of these are sometimes known as infotainment, edutainment and some other terms that are commonly used now. Within an ICTD context however, our concern is more with the information and education and less with entertainment. So, what are the kind of services that apply basically in the ICTD domain? We speak of government to government, one government department communicating with another. We speak of government to business as in procurement with government communicating with business and the reverse, government to citizen such as in a portal to pay your taxes, business to business, one business to another, business to business, one business to another, business to citizen, citizen to citizen. There are different ways in which we can use the services for which the content is produced. In order, once the content is produced using a particular application, how do we interconnect? The, connect, the interconnectivity is done through connectivity media. At the sender's end and if you will remember, at the sender's end you will remember in that model of communication I showed you earlier. At the sender's end there will be a network of telecommunication links from fixed phone lines, line of sight transmitters wireless networks and satellites and fiber optic cables which are part of an extensive grid enabling the network. These are telecommunication links. At the receiver's end that is at your home, at your desk with your little computer you will still require cables, modems and routers which are either internal to the system or external, connections to a radio, to a television set, a computer or a mobile phone. All of these are necessary in order for us to connect to each other. The internet itself rides on this convergent network using only a small portion of the total telecommunication resources available worldwide. Sometimes this is simply called the net and the internet is a network of a worldwide system of computer networks a network of networks you might say in which users from any one computer can if they have permission get information from any other computer or sometimes directly talk to other computers. The most widely used part of the internet is the world wide web 
often abbreviated as www or simply called the web and many of us have our own websites and our own web addresses. But as we begin to look at these technologies, we have talked about hardware and software and content and services. <coughs> we, in order for all of this to function, we need to have supporting environments. The first of these, because without this it cannot function, are our physical environments. In order for a computer or in order for the, to, to access the internet, in order for a television set or anything to work, stable electricity or an alternate power supply is absolutely essential. Many of us have small batteries called UPSs, uninterrupted uh, power supply that give us power for another 45 minutes or one hour even after the electricity has cut off. We also need in terms of physical environments, satellites and terrestrial wireless and wired telecommunications. This is important because sometimes for mobile communication in remote locations when you have to build line of sight wired uh, towers, distances are great and it is difficult. We also need buildings to house telephone exchanges and to, uh, and to house the access points. At the other end, we need users, uh, the users need computers, modems and routers and uh, constantly there is a need for maintenance and the upgrading of the hardware technology and the human capacity to run this hardware technology. So there are supporting environments which are physical, which require constant monitoring, upgradation and maintenance. At the same time, in any given society, for telecommunications to run, for systems to be in place, we also need supporting environments in terms of the socio-political and the regulatory. In this case, just like the aviation industry needs a set of rules, that the rail railways need a set of rules, in much the same way, the information industry or the telecommunications industry requires enabling policies, laws and regulations for ICTD, both for the technology and for practice. For example, if there were no, rule, no policies or no laws or regulations, we would have traffic chaos on our roads. It is because there are rules, regulations that all of us follow that we have a smooth running system of transportation on the ground, on rails, in the air and in the sea. So also with ICTs and so also with ICTD policy. At the same time, when we are using technology, we also need to have a policy in terms of an ICTD human capacity building. What kind of unskilled or skilled specialists are required to run an ICTD intervention? We also need to have rules in place of how we are going to manage this technology which is coming to us and which is available to us today. At the user's end, very often we look at nothing but that the mobile phone work, that the power supply work. But the point that is, uh, that I am trying to explain to you is that in order for all of these to function in a smooth and uninterrupted way for you and me as a user, one needs to have socio-political and regulatory environments. Having said that about environments and about the different regulatory frameworks, we also need to look very carefully at the different ICTs to understand what are their attributes and what are their limitations. For instance, we are familiar with print because we are familiar with our school textbook, with university textbook and with primers such as issue 1. Essentially, print technologies because we are familiar with them, we know that they can be used they can be reused, we can provide much more in-depth information than we can on a simple phone call. We can allow economies of scale or mass produce. A novel for example can sell a million copies without any change and we can allow uniform content. And these are the attributes of print and these are the advantages. However, to use print 
one needs to be literate. Once a book is printed, it is static in time and updating it is very difficult. It is also a passive one-way technology with little or no interactivity. Having said this about print, let us look at the broadcast technologies. Some are analog and now some are moving on to digital platforms. It does not matter whether they are analog or digital, we still are familiar with radio and TV. They are very fast, so you can deliver news or you can deliver information very quickly over radio and TV. We provide a different experience, we can feel and sense through more than one uh, sensory perception. We can again mass produce and standards are possible and uniform content is possible and they are easy to use by the user. But still in many countries there is limited access to radio and TV. Even today there are countries without radio. Again it is static in time and it is synchronous. In other words if you miss the 6 o'clock news today you have missed the 6 o'clock news. If you are not attending to the television at the time when a program is broadcast, chances are you have missed that program. So, updating is difficult. These are not problem or location specific. Because we mass produce them, we try to do it uniformly. It is a passive with very little interactivity. And we believe that using radio and TV means one size fits all content because we have to address so many different groups of people with so many different needs. And let us not be fooled, radio and television start up, the setting up of radio and television stations still is an expensive business and distribution and production costs still remain high. When we compare these to the digital computer and inter-based, internet based technologies, we find that the advantages of these the digital internet based technologies are that they provide interactivity, they have low per unit cost, they allow us to mass produce or create econo economies of scale. An economy of scale is that when you increase the numbers that you are producing for the cost of production goes down. Uniform content is possible, uniform standards are possible, we can update easily, these are problem and location specific and they are very user friendly. But in many countries, there is still limited access to the internet, there are still high development costs, there are capacities of providers, computer literacy is essential for someone to be able to use a computer or the internet. Local content is missing, but the real issues are of political will and an inadequate understanding of how and why we use these. Compare all of these to mobile technologies of today. The little mobile phone in your pocket or in your hand. It has many, many benefits. For instance, the mobile phone is a highly interactive medium where you get instant feedback just as you would in a telephone. It has a low per cost unit. It has allows economies of scale. Uniform content is possible as you blast um, SMS that is short messages or you blast multimedia messages. Can be updated easily. It is problem specific, it is location specific, it is very user friendly and you can take large content and break it into small parts. Local content can be developed and it is not necessary to be literate in order to use a mobile phone. But <coughs> use of mobile phone is nonetheless in many developing countries limited by physical constraints such as signal strength. Sometimes the farther you go away from an urban location the weaker the signal strength is. It is also limited by social factors inhibiting access to and ownership of ins instrument. For instance, if the cost of a mobile phone is very high, the poor will not be able to own one. So, the points that we have to remember about ICTs and their features are that we can classify them into technologies, applications, services and content. But all of these ICTs work within an external environment which consists of physical infrastructure such as power and energy and a legal and regulatory framework. To use technologies effectively, it is necessary to understand their strengths and their weaknesses and to choose the appropriate technology 
in a development contest. It does not mean that just because something is new that it is the best one. It is what is appropriate to be deployed at a particular point in time. Try this exercise given in practice in this practical exercise. An NGO in a small district of a country in Central Asia is keen on exploring the use of voicemail technologies. The NGO is unsure as to how to start and how to go about using mobile. Help the NGO by identifying the hardware, identifying maybe the environments, identifying the software, identifying the service provider, identifying what may be the cultural barriers and then make a list. Having made the first list, analyze your answers and make a second list and analyze your answers again and make a third list. Let us see what you find. There is no right answer, there is no wrong answer, but the process will help us to learn the different aspects about technology. As technology is growing, as it is evolving, there are changes taking place very, very rapidly so that it is impossible to predict today what will be the technology of the future. For instance, 10 years ago we could not talk about mobile phones and their spread. Today we are talking about new kind of um, tablet computers, some at very low cost. We are talking about different kind of devices which enable us to store more information. So we do not know in terms of hardware what the future holds. But today more than the laptop and uh, laptop computer and the desktop computer, the mobile phone in, this, in the hand of a person is a very powerful device. And the highest rates of growth of mobile phones are not in the western countries, are not in the developed countries, but the growth taking place in the Asia Pacific region. The mobile phone has a low energy consumption, does not require stable and continuous electricity supply. You charge it when there is power and you use it even if there is no electricity. Similarly, it is considered to be green technology because it has a low emission and a low carbon footprint. In terms of applications, there are changes taking place. Free and open source softwares are becoming more and more accepted. The web 2.0 which is the next generation web applications and web 2.0 is not about hardware. Web 2.0 is really about a bundle of our, or a basket of applications that allow increasing interactivity among people using the applications and allow what is known as user generated content and that is that you and I through a social network create our own content which we then distribute. A third dimension in terms of trends in evolution and, and ICTD evolution is the internet of things. The internet of things is a time where our devices will control other devices, where we will be able to manage most of our affairs where there is machine to machine communication and taking away the special time that we need for other kinds of work. So the internet of things where objects are linked through the internet and these in turn are linked on this convergent network with your mobile phone in your hand is the direction in which uh, evolution and growth of ICTs are taking place. In content using web 2 technologies Social networks, some of them you are familiar with, Facebook, Twitter, Flickr are some of the names you must have heard, blogs and wikis as all little open source bits of information, learning objects and learning object repositories, open educational resources and digital stories are some of the trends that are taking place in terms of content development where the shift takes place from a one person or one organization producing content for many to every individual being both the receiver of information and also the creator of information. <coughs> In services, we are looking at the sky as the limit with applications and content only limited by our imagination. Banking, healthcare, education, games, music, live streaming of television content, government applications, travel, tourism, news, emergency information, culture and heritage 
and you can keep adding to this list of the possible applications of uh, mobile phones and of different kinds of technologies in current parlance and in current use and in future use also. Its limitations and applications are only limited by our imagination. The factors that will determine the direction of ICT growth, really adaptability, how best you can use this in different conditions. Leverage, how best you can maneuver or use this technology with others. How easily you can master it, how easy it is to use. How accessible is it? How much does it cost? Is it low cost? How does it allow interactivity? How does it allow transferability of knowledge? And how unique is it in terms of allowing the user to create whatever they want on this new uh, direction, on this new technology, on this new application, on this new internet of things, on this new FOSS application or whatever. Essentially, the ability to create more, the ability to be more, um, to be able to do whatever we want with the technology is what will make it the future and not so much what is determined elsewhere. What we do with it is what will determine whether it will succeed or not. <coughs> Consider if you are buying a mobile phone for yourself, what are the features you want? Consider if you are buying a mobile phone for your grandparent, make a list of the features. Compare the two lists, compare the two lists and what difference is it there? What are the features that you want? What is it that you would like to buy for your grandparent? Are they the same? Compare notes with your friend and see what you find <coughs> and ask for help in purchasing phones. We come now to the end of section 1. We have in this section actually covered a wide terrain. We started with our trying to understand what development was about. We moved from understanding development to human development, to the link between communication and development, to understanding the processes of communication. Having understood that, in chapter 2, we looked at the tools of communication. And having looked at the tools of communication, we began to look at where, what are the future trends in development of these tools. And we explored a lot. My recommendation is that you go through the text alongside the slides and to do the practical exercises, to create your own practical exercises, to be able to understand the concepts better.